let's head over to Sikinar. Am I, uh... I might put... Cool, cool, cool. Hello, my name is Sikinar. Um, and I'm joined by Scarfelt. How are you again, Scarfelt? And uh, this is Ori in the Will of the Wisps, Ori 2, if you will. And yeah, 80% no out of bounds. Um, I will go ahead and just go ahead and get started. So I can do a countdown. In three, two, one, go. Okay, so right at the start, we're just gonna skip the prologue, which is like the introductory, the introductory sequence. And then I'm gonna just quit to the main menu like immediately. The reason I do that is because then there's another cutscene that is skipped if you just kind of uh, save and quit. Yeah, um, typically we actually do a lot of those in the normal run, but in a marathon setting, it doesn't actually save that much time to do in real time. So we're not gonna be doing that many quit to menus if at all possible. Yeah, only the ones that save like, you know, upwards of like 20 to 30 seconds. Yeah. Right now, um, cause this is a Metroidvania, um, we do start out, you know, per tradition without like any abilities or anything, just kind of jump in. And uh, we are gonna take advantage of the fact that there's a lot of like little money drops, you know, lying around. Uh, the currency in this game is called Spirit Light. It's that little number in the top right corner. Yeah, um, we need to get... I did the thing. You did, get the, you did the thing, yeah. That's a little corner piece. <laughs> it's pretty hard to do. You can't really do it consistently. It saves like half a second, but every time we get it, we're like... <gasps> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really hype. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we did just pick up our first item here. Yeah, the which torch. Which is a uh, torch. Yeah, it's like a combat item. It has a couple interesting kind of broken mechanics to it. There's like a hover you can do with it. Yeah, that'll be coming up in a little bit here. Um, just after we kill this enemy. Because we're supposed to go down there. Yeah. But instead, we can just hover right over like that. Yeah, you can just spam up slashes, and it's fine. And then you're meant to grab onto this blue moss here at the top to go up and open over, but you can... We can't do that with the torch, so we have to do that kind of finicky jump, but so he makes it look easy first time. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool, for sure. Yeah. It's very nice when that happens. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about keystones? Yeah, so I just picked up a thing called the Keystone, and I'm going to get a second one from this gentleman named Talk, who is an NPC that we talked to a few times. Well, we see him a few times. Yeah. And uh, what Keystones are is they just like unlock doors that block, uh, you know, unlock new areas. So you have to do little challenges and puzzles to get them open. Yeah, um, NPCs are actually new to Ori 2 as well as weapons, but uh, we're going to just avoid talking to pretty much all of them, except the ones you can buy things from. We do have to get rid of the torch real fast because we're going to get a second one. But if you get two at the same time, it like soft locks. Yeah. So. But fortunately, that water is right there very conveniently for us. Yeah, that water is like super convenient. It's just like right on the way. This yeah. is a first. This, this is an introduction to like kind of how the game like sets up like its boss slash chase sequences. Yeah. Um. So this one here is how I uh, he's pretty mad, but this is just an auto scroller. We just kind of jump through because we don't have enough abilities to make it faster. And then the boss itself, uh, we, we picked easy difficulty at the start of the game, and you're going to see the ramifications of that uh, right now with this fight. Yep. <laughs> and it's done. So <laughs> blink and you miss it. Yeah. Now, in easy mode, um, you're, 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 in no mode, you're intended to take Howl's health all the way down, but in easy, it's just it's literally four hits and you're done. Yeah. Um, and we did unlock Howl's little hideout down here, so we're just going to hop down there. Yeah, it's worth mentioning that e within easy mode, obviously it's quicker, but also easy mode has some unique skips um, to this, to that difficulty, because you do more damage and you take less damage, and also things cost less, which means that the categories are actually completely different between easy and normal, which is pretty cool. And here we have a tree, which uh, you'll see what it does in just a moment. And it gave us a sword. So these things kind of grant us the abilities that we collect throughout the game. So we'll be looking for those trees throughout yeah. And the sword is cool. It's oops, I have Eva gun. <laughs> That's okay. Um, that won't be yeah. relevant. <laughs> uh, here's a funny little skip. Yeah, the nice. torch. The torch is more like I guess spectacularly um, broken um, or interesting to use. I guess I should say. Um, but the sword still has some stuff. Like you can see, the up slash gives you a little bit of airtime there. Yeah, you can get like little hovers and stuff with it. It's not quite as like dramatic as the torch. Um, we do use it to do like a little skip down here real quick though. Yeah. And this... Right now we're just making a detour to collect a couple, um, like an item and then an ability. Yeah. Um, did this, you can see this hover just uh, over here that you, you know, skip up and to do that wall jump or whatever. And we're meant to go up over the top here, but we can just do this um, sword hover again and not have to bother. 
And like Hollow Knight, you can do like pogos and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of cool sword combos you can do. Yeah. This is uh, the ability called double jump. It's just like what it sounds like. Just gives us a second jump in the air, yeah. which is kind of subtle, but super helpful. Yeah, it's much more of like a horizontal piece than a vertical piece than Ori. Um, we just got our first shard there, which was uh, sticky. Um, shards are, um, think like your materia in Final Fantasy VII or um, sh charms in Hollow Knight. Basically, you equip them and you slightly alter what you can do. So here, uh, we'll be sticking to walls now and be able to climb up them. Um, which doesn't sound like it'd be super useful, but it makes some upcoming skips significantly easier. Yeah, specifically one coming up here called Door Skip, which uh, one of the doors, like we mentioned before, you're supposed to go through it, but we can actually skip it. And what that does is let us keep a uh, keystone that we were supposed to use to open it. So yeah. that's relevant later. Yes. It's, uh, we're going to use this uh, creature here. We call them like Frankies or Squonkies. Yeah. I forget. I just call them Frankies because they're like monkeys, but they're frogs. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so what he's going to do is uh, stick to this wall in a way to make this guy um, jump up just below him. And head over okay. here. Very over. close. Oh, oh that, that was close. Jump real quick. Yeah, it's a really difficult okay, skip nice. for sure. Nice. Nice. Nicely done. Yeah, it's a super hard skip, but even with like that um, slightly more consistent strat there. Um, yeah, basically, what that does now, uh, like Sticky like, like mentioned, um, in the top left, we still have that keystone. And uh, keystones can actually be used on any door in the game, not just the one that they're assigned to, which means that um, we're going to be able to skip a later keystone, which is very useful. So keep that in mind. It's not going for another 20 minutes or so, but yeah. And we just picked up another shard. Uh, this one's called Reckless. What it does is increase your attack power while also um, increasing how much damage you take. So it's kind of like a give and take. Yeah. And then right after that, we got the regen ability, which um, Scarfell, did you want to yeah, describe sure. regen? Um, yeah, so regenerate, um, basically, uh, again, similar to Hollow Knight, uh, you can hold the button for a little bit and uh, that will make you focus essentially. And it'll cause one of the little blue energy cells in the bottom left of the HUD but it'll heal you uh, free health, which again, doesn't sound like it'd be spectacularly useful in a speedrun because you're, ideally you don't want to get hit, but in this category, it's completely mandatory. So we're going to be using it uh, for heals, but also for an unintended uh, new tech I got discovered called Wave Dashing, which will be coming up for about five minutes or so, but it's very cool once we get to it. Yeah, a lot of new stuff was found in the past like month. Yeah, since the submission happened, so. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I'm really excited to like showcase all of it too. Yeah. And also, I just want to like quickly thank everyone for like donating towards this game. Um, yeah. Because so I'm really excited to run it and happy that I can show it to y'all. Yeah. Um, coming up here now is Ofer Skip. Uh, there's a cutscene if you walk slightly further forward. So instead, uh, so he's gonna just jump up and over it. Um, and this trick nice. is nicely done. That trick is a lot harder than it looks because the collision on stuff doesn't quite match up where the visuals are because I guess they didn't expect you to be walking up there, right? But now, yeah, uh, pretty much. This is um, something that is probably the most obviously broken thing of the run. Uh, Ori is now flying. How is that possible? <laughs> um, yeah, there's a, it's a thing we call a century jump. Oop. Which uh, centuries are um, uh, on their own. They're not anything super special. They're just um, like you drop one and it's like a little butterfly and it attacks enemies that go near it. But something about like the animation of releasing a sentry compounding with like doing a slash at the same time just sends Ori flying sky high. Yeah, uh, you have to do it on the exact same frame, um, which uh, can be a bit difficult, but it's why we're, we're typically going to be sticking to the ground because doing them in the air, in the air is a lot harder uh, because it's, um, it's just a lot harder input because you can't just do it on the same frame, but it's still frame perfect. And then here's our next ability, which is uh, Spirit Arc, which is essentially just a bow and arrow. Um, I don't know, did we mention that like everything kind of uses energy? Yeah, no, yeah, I mentioned that, yeah, yeah. Um, so energy, I mentioned regenerate uses some, uh, so does the bow and also sentry. And what makes that uh, quite interesting for this run is that um, every time we use sentry, it costs one energy to do so, which means that we can't just sentry jump freely. We have to be very specific about where we do sentry jumps. However, as you're going to see in a second, um, Save and quitting uh, to the menu uh, gives you back one energy. So we're going to deliberately do that sometimes just for the sake of getting energy back. Uh, but it's time consuming to do that all the time. So you have to be very careful with when you, and where you sentry jump. 
That little crouch. I had to duck for that <laughs> mosquito. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> mosquito out in G could be a pain sometimes. Yeah, those, the way those move is kind of random, so. Yeah. This... Um, what we just did was we did a little mini game to open up the first dungeon. Yeah. There's so not we had to collect much... these eye stones. So there's not much in the form of RNG in this in this run, uh, which is quite fortunate. Yeah, much... really nice. The One of the more RNG components used to be the ending, but that's been mitigated, so. Yeah, whenever we get to that, it's pretty spectacular. Oh, you'll notice I'm picking up these blue and green, like, kind of circles, and what those are is those increase my max life and energy. We have to collect two of each. Yeah. And then this is another trick. Yeah, so the we were meant to go up here and lower the water, but um, the save trigger, as you can see in the bottom left, the game says with that little Ori icon, the save trigger is always in the water regardless. So if we swim down through the water, uh, we can just about make it to the save trigger. Nice, got the weave. Nice, just threading the needle there. <laughs> and I'm gonna do a quit the menu here because there's an enemy that spawned at the bottom and he's really annoying and can kill me. So I'm just gonna, he like charges at you. So I'm just yeah. gonna do this and then they're gone. And over here to the left, we're actually gonna activate uh, one of the in-game speedrun things, which is a spirit trial. And so yeah. if you just remember the spot here. Yeah. We're gonna be coming back there later, and the reason for that is that you actually get a thousand spirit light, which is the money, and uh, if you forgot, uh, for completing um, the spirit trial. So we're gonna, it's the fastest way to get money because grinding is very slow in this game. And as you can see, we're just getting like ability after ability in the beginning. Um, that's kind of like the first half of the run, essentially. It's just getting all our skills. Yeah. And we just got the dash. Of, ooh, we just <laughs> that startled me. Oh yeah. Sometimes that happens. I like flinched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, as you can see, Dash just lets us do like a quick little boost forward. Yeah, and what's cool about Dash is, first of all, obviously it's pretty quick, but um, you can actually interrupt Dash uh, with either a jump or a slash, and you can then interrupt that with another Dash, which means you can chain together a lot of Dashes quite quickly. Uh, there's a pretty um, obvious example of it later that I'll point out when we get to it. Okay, we're just making our way up to that race that we had seen before. Yeah. Yeah, I can get a cool little trick. Ah, oh, sun's way too low. <laughs> yeah. It's like kind of RNG, but typically in the moment we would just save and quit uh, to get some energy back there, but that's very time consuming for a marathon, so. So this is the race. Um, luckily, like some some of the races require you to have like a lot of additional abilities, but this one only requires dash pretty much to beat the developer time. Yeah, and we're gonna beat the developer time by quite a bit. Like this one's basically just falling in certain ways, but you'll see at the end that Siki will, you know, do that dash jump cancel thing I mentioned before. Like that. And we're just making our way back up. So we have to go like the same way we went before. Yeah. We're going to get the final of our little uh, cell pickups here, which is the energy one on the left. And also the advantage of that is that it refills our energy to full. So now we can just do sentry jumps again without needing to save quick. That was not good. I got a low sentry. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so if your sentry is like at the wrong kind of height, that can actually kind of mess up the, the trick there. Yeah. And it can vary a little bit. Yeah, um, it's uh, frame rate dependent. Um, and also, if you're even one frame off from doing the input, uh, it'll mess up slightly. So it, it can be quite punishing, but you do get used to it. Okay, so we're back out. Nicely done. And that is what we were meant to do before, which is lowering the water. Um, you actually have to lower the water because that little purple door, you can't open it until the water is lowered. There's a kill plane um, otherwise. I'm gonna go for a wave dash, nicely done. Nice, yeah, so, that was really clean. Yeah, that, so that's the wave dash we were talking about before. Um, by dashing into a wall and then using regenerate and tapping the other direction, or he just goes flying in the other direction. And the reason we call it a wave dash is we were discussing what to name it. And then one of the devs of the game, Onin, came in and said, call it a wave dash because it looks like Ori is waving at the camera. And everyone went, oh my god, that's so cute. And we all went for it. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so now we've opened that door. Um, this kind of leads to the boss room of this dungeon, which yeah. uh, you'll see that because of the verticality that we're, that we're given with sentry jumping, we can actually make quick work of that. Yeah, um, it's also worth mentioning that uh, we just um, shopped from... Oh, wait, the Mokir way more important. 
Let's talk yeah, about we're them. gonna talk about Moki. <laughs> they're so cute. Look at those friends. Sadly, we only see them once in this run. Yeah, they're telling us about the spirit wells, just the fast travel points, but we will just not touch them at all for the whole run. So, unfortunate. And that was the boss room. Yep. We it's just kind of went over the trigger. If you walk like a certain amount into that room, it'll trigger the fight, which is, it's like a big beetle in case you're curious. Yeah, it takes about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. So absolutely do not want to do that. Yeah, not needed. And this is a main, this ability here is a staple of the uh, Ori franchise, which as you can see here, we now have Bash, which just lets us like get a trajectory off of like an object and then get launched in that direction. Yeah, and what's cool about it is that it actually sends projectiles and enemies back in the other direction, which means you can... And uh, there's some puzzles that we're going to be using with it later on. And also you can do things like, uh, whenever you bash off an object, if you let go of the analog stick or keyboard, if you're playing on keyboard, um, you'll actually keep all of your momentum in a little glide motion, which means you can basically just like keep a lot of momentum as long as you don't touch any direction afterwards. Frog champ? Frog champ. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that was cool lock. Yeah. And that was almost a cutscene, but we actually skip it. Yeah, the game tries to lock you in place, but Slash is moving very slightly forward so we can make the save trigger. Um, and coming up now is a really important skip. Uh, this is one of the most major skips in the whole run. Uh, what you're meant to do is go off to the water mill and clear the water and then come back here, but on easy mode, you can just about make it through the water. And what Siki's doing is equipping and unequipping the shard called Overcharge. Um, which actually makes everything cost half as much energy, um, but you take double damage. Um, so he has to equip it to be able to heal up. Now he has to bash this um, little projectile at a wall over there, um, because the wall needs to be broken, but it's kind of off screen. But this guy sends a projectile at us because he's mean. Uh, we heal back up to full, unequip overcharge again, and go back into the water. Now hitting these spikes is deliberate because they do slightly less damage in the water, so you can stack the iframes a lot better in your favor. And then you can hold bash uh, to make the iframes last slightly longer. And uh, coming at the other end, we now need to do a frame perfect aerial sentry jump to get out the other side. So we're going to equip aerial nice. and overcharge. Got it. Oh, that's a relief. That was, third, that, was, that was the last try I got too. <laughs> yeah, you only get three sentries at a time. So if he didn't get that one, he'd have to do the whole trick again. Okay, let me try to go, go skip here. Yeah. Nice. That one's really difficult. So that's a cutscene scope. It's, it's a lot harder than it looks because the game tries very hard to drag you to the right. And now that Shriek in the background that we just saw, uh, she's the antagonist of the game, but she doesn't really notice us if we go over her cutscene trigger, which is very polite of her. Actually, she doesn't notice in that cutscene anyways. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, like the, the sequence just doesn't begin or anything, so. Yeah. Um, that was pretty good, those bubble cycles, and the water below that uh, instantly kills you. So if the bubbles aren't playing nice or you mess up the cycle slightly, it can be a real pain. And did a little quick, quick menu here to get some health refill. And then here's a fun swag strat. It's kind of like adjacent to the way the um, wave dashing works, but it's a little different. Yeah. Yeah, just gives you a little boost yeah. like that. Anyway, coming up now is... Uh, probably the biggest skip in the whole run, which is Koo Skip. Now, the whole point of the story at this point is that we're trying to rescue our bird friend, Koo. Um, he was just over there to the right, but uh, because we're very mean, we don't want to rescue her, and we want to go up and over her cutscene trigger like that. And it's very complicated to explain why that works, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> I'm just going to show this part here instead, um, which is doing the same thing, which is a sentry dash, like that. Um, by doing a slash, then a sentry, and then a dash, in a specific way, uh, you just go flying. We can only do it on certain slopes, which is why we don't do it all the time. And now... Okay, it... that part's a little spooky. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so the reason... If you remember a million years ago, we kept that one keystone. Um, and the reason for that is that there's the keystone you're meant to get there uh, is down low, and it triggers a cutscene. But by keeping that one from earlier, we skip that entirely. Nice wave dash. And go like this. Oop, I'll just do this. Ah, I need that health. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna quit the menu here real quick. Yeah, that's fine. I uh, should have mentioned as well, uh, so Ku, uh, in this section you're meant to actually like, start riding Ku, who's like a bird, right? And um, that means that the bird can hover with um, their wings, you know, on these little updrafts. Ori cannot do that, meaning this section is obviously completely unintended. We have to do a pile of um, really specific strats to get through the section without Ku. 
yeah the, the this is one of my favorite areas honestly just because of like all like the little things we have to figure out yeah it's it's really really cool because you have to do a lot of specific um, movement it's a lot of really fast movement and you can optimize a lot of it in different ways swag strat yeah swag strat nice <laughs> And it's going to be a sentry dash here again, going up and over this upper cutscene trigger with Shriek. She's busy nobbling on some worms, but she again doesn't notice us. And that coming up here is going to be Q-Skip 2, but there's another cutscene at the end here, uh, which triggers many, many cutscenes, uh, but we can just go up and over it. And there we go, we've completely finished the Silent Woods now. But now we're coming into feeding Grand Skip. is, yeah, which if you touch that ground area in that tunnel, it triggers like a, a stealth kind of hide and seek sequence. But if you just touch the ground a little later, like where I where I landed, it just never triggers that. And this whole zone is supposed to be like insta death if you like go into the wrong area because of the bird. But yeah. that just never triggers. Yeah, which is very, very useful because that means that the end of the game is actually from that area. So we can just go to the end of the game pretty much whenever we want. But unfortunately, we need to get one more ability. But fortunately, it happens to be right here. Yeah, so this ability is pretty cool. It, it's it's used a lot more in like other categories, but and it has its marginal uses in this one too, but we still need it like absolutely just because of a couple bottlenecks. Yeah, it's similar to the bow, we like use it like twice and that's it. But it's it's it is a cool ability for sure. And we're just gonna use sentry jumps to pretty much just skip how this area is meant to be played. And you can do some cool stuff as well, like up slashing this sand gives you your dash back because it counts as an object, I guess. Okay, so here is the ability, not not too uh, bad. And it's called Burrow, which uh, I'll show you what it does in a second here. Yeah. It lets you dig around and you get a little boost when you get knocked out of the sand. So it just does this. Doop. Yeah. Um, Burrow can be used in a, cool, a few QLs as well, that you can see you can just went through there, that section there pretty quickly. Um, but again, we're only using like once or twice in the whole run, like for necessary purposes. This is also now probably actually. Oh, now I'm just gonna like. Oh, sorry. What were you? I think you were gonna say what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this is the point in the run where if you're you've played this game, you're thinking, well, okay, we have like ten minutes left in the estimate. How on earth are you meant to finish the game? And here we are at the final level. <laughs> we yep. get there pretty quickly. Which, this part here is like a combat challenge that takes about 30 seconds, so it's good time for donations. Yeah. Helps if my mic's off mute. Let's go ahead and start with huh? Rory Rye 44 who sent in $200. Wow. Nice. I haven't really kept up with the Will of the Wisps run, so I'm really excited to see how the run has evolved in the last few months. Good luck, Sicky. Thanks. Can I get one more? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Donny137C sends in $50. Love GDQ, love Ori, love speedrun. Thanks to all the players and organizers and everyone involved for making this happen. Uh, you can probably okay, add a swag boost. Does that call for one more? Uh, um, yeah, totally. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's take $200 from Insomniac Toaster. Happy to see the event continue, and I'm managing to catch the Ori run as well. Good luck to all of the runners. Yeah, so we just so picked, we just picked uh, up an ability yeah. Yeah, called, called Launch. Um, it's the last ability of the game uh, that we pick up for the route. Ben, it's not really like broken per se. It's just powerful like on its own. Yeah, it's what's that? Yeah, yeah swatch out. You can get like little glides with it like that. Yeah. Um, launch is basically, if you remember a bash, which lets us just, you know, um, do that like dash in the air or whatever. It's pretty much that, but anytime we want. And it refreshes every time we touch a wall or we hit an enemy. So we're going to have like a lot of air time now. I can also do cool things like this Terra walk um, to glide along the ground. Yeah, it gives you like a fast walk if you bounce on like a surface or something. And we just entered the final dungeon. I'm gonna quit to menu real quick, just to skip like a minute and a half cutscene of like a pan up and shows the whole dungeon. And, but you don't have to worry about that because we're gonna see it. Yeah. Also wanna give a real yeah, quick- Yeah, the out of bounds, the no out of bounds category does like the whole thing. Yeah. I wanna give a real quick shout out to OMFQ, who's the current world record holder of this run, who unfortunately couldn't make it. 
Um, I'm gonna give him a shout out because he's obviously very good at the whole run, but his Willow Tree in particular is ridiculous. And he um, found a lot of the strats for this area. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, for sure. So um, as you can see, we're just eliminating these little things and then they they slowly but surely like declutter this doorway that's blocked by like these dead branches and infected stuff. Yeah, um, each heart has its own strategies and its own cycles. Uh, it can be very difficult to make all the fastest cycles. Um, this one in particular, heart two, is just the floor is literally lava. Uh, we're not gonna touch the ground for a long time here. It's gonna be launching. Also worth mentioning that anything with the blue moss on it there we're meant to have an ability called Grapple, which lets us, you know, as you'd imagine, grapple straight to it. We do not have that ability, making every single one of these a little bit harder than they should be. And if you saw like what I did there, I did a quick to menu just now and I shot an arrow at the heart, like for the killing blow. Um, that's just to showcase a strat that we do to save in-game time in the runs. It doesn't save like real time, so I'm not gonna be doing it for like every single heart, but... Um... Yeah. But uh, yeah, what it is is like, you, oh, sorry, one sec. Yeah, that's all good. Um, I gotta think about this part. Yeah, I'll explain this part. Uh, so we're meant to bash a projectile from the right-hand side of the screen, bring it through some portals in the puzzle, but you can actually bash this one all the way over um, if you time your correctly, nicely done. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that strat's really difficult. <sighs> yeah, it's a little, little nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's three hearts down. Uh, Sicky's gonna go for the damage time, because he always does, because it's cool. Yeah. I need a little energy refill here. And here's the dig heart, which is pretty fun. Yeah. It's pretty cool, because again, you don't touch the ground for a super long time, and you can like burst through the sand like that, which gives all your dash launch, et cetera, back as well. Nicely done. You can get free movement if you kill that heart and dig <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't actually do anything. It's not quicker. It just looks cool. Yeah, it just looks fun. <laughs> so uh, just in case, I'm gonna grab this. Yeah, that's fair. And that's half of the hearts down. Um, we're coming up to heart five, which is a big run killer. Especially now we have a faster cycle for it. We're gonna do a wave dash coming out of here and hopefully make the fast cycle. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this. Oh. I didn't have launch. I was oh, like, oh, I got it. You didn't touch the ground, unfortunately. Uh, uh, this laser here also just doesn't have a hitbox on the bottom of it. Yeah, but we're meant to grapple off these little blue lanterns you see there, but because we don't have grapple, uh, we have to just launch into the walls and hope we don't hit any spikes. Ooh. Oh, that was unfortunate. I'm going to take another death here, actually. There yeah. we go. Okay. Yeah, I got a kind of a trolley uh, cycle there. Yeah. It can be really difficult to uh, do this section with like... The cycles used to get feel very random. So you have to adapt a lot on the fly. Yeah, you have to kind of know like when to do your launch and stuff because you only have limited time to charge the launch. Yeah. But that worked out. Second try is pretty good. Get the thread the needle on the way down here. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> nice. Uh, we're coming up to actually a boss. Uh, he's going to die pretty much instantly again. <laughs> And yeah, I'm gonna drop some sentries here for good luck. <laughs> yeah, remember the sentry does actually do things besides uh, make us jump, so you can do some damage there. And the uh, triple rare. Oh, that is super rare to get that like to get that attack. Got it. <laughs> nice. That was sketch. Yeah. That was real sketch. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he usually does a double laser there, and it's a lot easier to avoid, but the triple laser is like a, is like a totally other thing. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I, I'm not sure if we mentioned, but every time you attack, you get uh, jumps, launch, etc. back. So you can just stay in the air pretty much forever against that boss by just slashing and jumping, jump canceling your combos. Uh, we're coming up to a pretty cool heart, um, heart seven, which has this little strap that you can go through the middle lasers here. Ooh, didn't get it. That's okay. I'm just gonna avoid it. Oh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> okay, I'll attempt it again. Okay. Let's see here. Nice. Started the needle. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, like, a lot of lasers have blind spots on them, so... Yeah. And now we're coming out to Heart 8, which is the hardest heart, because of course it is. <laughs> which makes yeah, this the game final heart. super stressful. Really nerve-wracking. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of cycles. And we're meant to use the feather here to like float, but we don't have the feather. Uh, so we're gonna have to go through these cycles in a very specific way. So like you can see like- Yeah, really taking advantage of launch here. Yeah. Um, this last one, uh, you actually physically can't make it in one launch. So what we're gonna do is uh, jump up, launch into the wall to get our launch back. Ooh. And, oh, uh, unfortunate. You can just about make it. Try here. Yeah, it's like it's like really tight. Yeah, for sure. No. Oh, unfortunate as well. Yeah, the thing as well is like obviously uh, two hits and you're dead. So, you know. Yeah, you only get the two hits. Yeah. Nice, got it. Nice. Yeah, and now. Okay, so. That's it. Yeah, that is the. That's the final part. So that's the dungeon's done. So now all we have to do is the final boss, which is Shriek. Yeah. Uh, heading up to it, do you want to explain the how the fight works? Yeah, totally. Um, so I mentioned this like in that interview. It's a four-phase fight. Yeah. Ooh. Um, yeah, so it's a four-phase fight. And we're going to try to end the fight on phase two, which is like a chase sequence. Yeah, she did. It's not even like an unintended, like, saying it's unintended is a, you know, downplaying it. Like she doesn't even have her health bar visible because they never thought you'd hit her during the escape sequence, but you can, so we do. Yeah, you totally, you can deal damage and everything. It's just normal. Yeah. This is only possible on easy mode as well, so. Yeah, so for the first phase, we're just gonna basically hit her and try and stagger her as quickly as we can. And, and then, oh yeah, sorry, you can cover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty difficult to do. So pretty much what we're gonna do is just, we know where she's gonna swoop to, we're gonna try and hit her as much as we can while she's sweeping. So on this first one, we're gonna launch straight up and then do a dash and a down slash. Nice. Um, and then this one, we're gonna uh, head over to the right and then using a sentry, interrupt your knockback. So then you can just do that to um, keep slashing at her. You know, drop three sentries and then launch up to the right and then hit her again. I did not equip overcharge. Oh no. Um, this might still work. We'll yeah, try. if it doesn't work, then we'll like you can just uh, try again. It's pretty short. Every game we let you try again. Um, so yeah, slash four times to the left, and then dash to the right. Ooh. We will drop sentries, but yeah. I'm gonna attempt it again. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So yeah, um, I'll just go through the um, same motions of what we just did there again. Uh, just because like each each individual step of this is a lot harder than it looks as well. Because you can see like Shriek uh, flies past pretty quickly, so there's not much time to you know get in everything you need to do. So like. Ooh. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, let's see if we can do this. This is a really hard strategy as well. And um, to clarify, like um, it is the kind of game where you can't really get attached to your runs because uh, you know Heart Eight could kill them, Heart Five could kill them, uh, then Fast Shriek could kill them. And there's also different versions of Fast Shriek, you know, some are faster than others. So yeah, you really have to just, you know, play each run as it comes and not let each run, you know, not um, get tilted if you start losing time towards the end. Yeah, again, now we have Overcharge on, we can drop a few more sentries here and do more damage, but obviously that means that we're taking more damage as well. Um, and I'm gonna drop three last sentries. Yikes. And Got then it. get over. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Um, as you can tell, there was no health bar, but um, I was draining health the whole time. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, it just jumps straight to the ending. And yep, that is, that's basically the run. We're still not done timing because there's like a walk sequence that we call it crawl yeah. that happens, but it's not after this long cut scene. So uh, real quick, I just wanted to shout out just the community and just all the uh, people who do the runs and who participate in the community in any way. Uh, Cause it's just really, it's a really great group of people and a lot of really just real clever you know, strap finders, glitch hunters, um, like uh, Techopar for one, just mention a few, and like yeah, OMFQ, um, and uh, like Abra and everyone, just yeah. So there's some really really cool people. I only joined very recently, um, the last few months here since World of came out, and I'm blown away by how kind and supportive everyone is. So yeah, it's a really great game, and there's great resources to get into the game as well. So if you're interested in this or other categories. Um, that may or may not be more beginner friendly or whatever, um, I'd recommend heading over to thespeedrun.com and checking out the resources there, and you can join the Discord as well. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, sad warning. Yeah, this, this <laughs> cutscene's real This is sad. a tearjerker. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, Shriek, who, um, was the final boss, is defeated and 
takes takes a uh, shelter in this husk. Yeah, it's it's a pretty crushing game. We skipped all of her backstory, so she probably doesn't seem like that tragic a character. But damn, <laughs> she's pretty sad. Yeah, she ends up being one of like the most interesting characters. <laughs> yeah, just because of everything. And uh, but yeah, and uh, I guess yeah, this is a perfect time for donations because I'm just gonna be doing my little crawl and. Uh, some yeah. more sad, <laughs> basically. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's do a hundred dollars here from All in One Mighty. Hey, Sicky, Mighty. Mighty here. So glad to see your run at GDQ. You're such a wonderful and happy runner. I'll always remember sharing the couch with you at Calathon. It was awesome. Hope the run goes well. Good luck. Thanks, Mighty. I've also got $10 from Emco. Love the Ori run. Been super excited for this. Thank you all. Also, um, shout outs to Moon, by the way. Just, yeah. Just making this game. Yeah, this is the best game. It's so good. It's, it's just it's just an amazing game. Just It's great casually, too. Just, yeah. just everyone's got to play it. Also, bye, Frog Dad. Bye, Frog Dad. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> You know, this game and the first game are both uh, unbelievably good. I could not recommend them highly enough. Yeah, fantastic. Both of them, yeah. And as you can see here, uh, time is coming up when Ori falls on this little ball of light. So in about a second here, and time. Nicely done. What was my real time? 30, it's like a 36. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. That run, that run felt really nice. Yeah, that felt, that run. Yeah, I got like a lot of little little cutscene skips and stuff. I, I got in this run, which my consistency was less than great in practice. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, this is just like an ending sequence where Ori saves the the forest essentially through their noble sacrifice. Ori's a very kind soul. Um, oh, and just thanks again for donating towards this run. Really yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Honored, honestly. Yeah, it's really, really cool that everyone did that. Also, hey, and it's, it's Koo. Yeah, this is the bird we were trying to save the whole time. <laughs> She's and we here. literally never see them. <laughs> yeah, until now. But they're okay, so don't worry. Yeah. Nothing bad happens to Koo in the whole game. I promise. Nothing. Yeah. Koo just hangs out the whole time, that's fun. Yep. Super happy bird. I should also say thank you very and much then... for having me on, because I really appreciated it. It was very fun to do. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, yeah. me, Scarfell Gnome of Q are kind of the... been really, really working hard on this category, so... I'm glad I, me and you were able to showcase it. Yeah, for sure. It's a really, really cool run. A lot of fun. Really, all the categories are cool. Like, yeah, there's so much out of bounds tech in this game. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, sh should have said. Yeah, like, um, this is obviously no out of bounds. Uh, but yeah, the out of bounds one is basically completely different, and it's you know just incredibly impressive stuff to the people who run that. And what's this? It's a oh. tree. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> Turns out it's all fine. Turns out the forest is saved. This probably does look like complete nonsense. I, I, I mean, we don't even see Guma or Naru in the whole game as well, right? So like half of the characters yeah. on screen, people are like, who are these people? Without the prologue, a lot of stuff really doesn't add up. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I accept it. I mean, trust me, this is really sad. Like, <laughs> I promise it's really sad. Yeah, this, this is like actually beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's really bittersweet, I should say. Yeah. I just noticed that Koo gets bigger in this yeah. time. Yeah, she does. I literally never saw that yeah. <laughs> until now. There's a part later where she flies past because she's an adult bird now. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, that's Koo? Okay. Yeah. There's Because Koo's off flying, you know? Because, I mean, there's no owls in this place, right? I don't think so. Oh, and then Naru waves, so of course it is. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. I think, uh, yep, that'll be more or less it from us. Yeah.
Shout out to the music. Oh, yeah, the music in this game is so good. <laughs> Holy cow. Siki, thank you so much for that awesome run. Oh. All right. I want to get in one quick donation here. We've got Cavarell with $25. Hollow Knight and Ori are two of my favorite Metroidvania-style games, and having them back-to-back -back is wonderful. Thanks to all the runners and organizers for putting on a great event. Oh, okay. I need to take a breath after that. And we need to take a break for some Twitch ads. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey, OmniGamer here, and my book Speedrun Science is the complete guide to speedrunning's process, history, philosophy, and so much more. Check it out at Fangamer.com. Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online is sponsored by RetroTink. RetroTink LLC is a boutique designer and manufacturer of the popular RetroTink 2X line of doubling upscaler for zero added lag connection of retro consoles to your modern HDTV. Our products enable seamless integration of composite S-video component and RGB video to your current setup in a way that respects and preserves the original experience. You can find them at their website, RetroTink.com, or on Twitter, at RetroTink2. SGDQ 2020 is also sponsored by DigitalOcean. Start your $100 free trial today by signing up at do.co slash gdq. You can also learn how gaming companies around the world leverage DigitalOcean Cloud at do.co slash gaming. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Poetry Done Quick. I have a few donations to read here. 
We have five dollars from Covert Muffin. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Twitch chat is cute. This speed run is too. I also have a $50 donation from Untitled Goose Poet. Honk, 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 honk. Honk, 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 honk. Honk, 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 honk. <clears throat> All right, I think that's enough poetry for the moment. Holy cow, we had a lot of love coming in for that Ori run. Try and catch up on some of these donations. Joey Steele sent us $25. Awesome Ori run. Could not have said that better myself. We also had $25 from Nintendo Oblivion. I've been a longtime fan of speedruns, but it wasn't until Ori and the Will of the Wisps that I found a game that I truly wanted to speedrun myself. This game is amazing, and I know Sikinar is going to give everyone watching a fantastic showcase of it. We also had $25 come in from Dolan. Just beat Ori casually. Excited to see how fast boys break it. hi Looking ahead a little bit in the schedule here. We've got a $20 donation from True Geek. Yono dressed as Link? Who could say no? Let's see that Adorbs Elephant dressed as our favorite distressed princess. And I've got to tell you, I have seen uh, the Yono in Link costume, and it is the most adorable thing. It is ridiculous. If you haven't seen it, you don't know, you can't imagine. You can imagine. It's an adorable elephant in a Link costume. You know you all want to see that. Checking in on that right now, we've got a $3,000 goal to make that happen. Looks like we're just a shade over $1,800. Yono is going to be up right after this Gunvolt Chronicles run, so make sure to get those donations in. There's a $25 donation here from PF. Donating for the best two games of the past decade not named Witcher 3 block we just had. That Ori ending. For those of you who may just be joining us or who are joining us for the first time, Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online is a charity speedrunning marathon benefiting Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is an international medical humanitarian aid organization that works in over 70 countries around the world. A big part of MSF's current operations is providing humanitarian aid to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. For the first time ever, MSF has recently started medical work in the U.S., in New York City, MSF partnered with local organizations to improve infection prevention and control measures and open temporary relief stations, offering free showers and toiletries and information on additional services. MSF staff are assisting with contact tracing and the development and dissemination of health promotion materials.
Amanda sent us $25. Uh, are we still doing the poetry thing? I've come here to view this year's GDQ, and it seems poetry now controls this broadcast. So I'll send in some dough for this wonderful show to let the runners know that they gotta go fast. We are always doing the poetry thing. Poetry is never not happening now. I mean, as long as y'all keep donating poetry. Skyler63 sent us $25. Super excited for the Ori and the Will of the, Risks, Will of the Wisps run now. Also putting my money to Mario Kart bonus game to get that next bonus game. Hey, thank you for that. That's a ways down in the future. But let me check in on that real quick, see how we're doing. We are at just short of $8,500 out of $40,000. Now, looking at the schedule, we're about 22 hours out from that but it is never too late to start getting in your donations if you want to make sure we're getting things added to the schedule. All right, I've got word that we are ready for the next game. Let's head over to Benjo with Gunvolt Chronicles, Luminous Avenger X. Take us away. Here to surprise you real quick, everyone. <laughs> so, wait. I'm Keezeron. I'm joined by a qualified panel. I had to replace Hobbs and Spike. They're a bunch of knuckleheads anyway. I'm here with Feasel, YKB, and Kung Fu. How are you three doing today? Hey, how's it going? We're doing great. Yeah. Awesome. Today's been awesome. Now, yeah, there's been a lot of really awesome games that have happened today. Uh, many more than yesterday. So we have a little bit more that we had to work through, but we narrowed it down to about four hype moments that we found throughout the event. And we're each going to talk about a couple of clips and we're going to have them playing in the background. So we're just going to start uh, Trial by Fire. Fees, let's, let's talk about Kid Icarus. Huh? All right, so sure thing. This morning, Fruit Bat Salad played some Kid Icarus and showed off some really cool glitches. Here we see a series of smaller skips in 3-4, nails those, and then he he gets this screen wrap right here to skip a good portion of the level. Moving on into the biggest skip of this run, skipping the entire final boss fight. Look at that. First try, he nails that. First try, skipping the boss fight, taking him right into the final level. E have everything. It cuts off the text, so you get that wonderful raise. And now you get your wings. We're in the final level, and that's it. So... Chat. Now, if you, if you guys in chat thought that this was the most hype moment of the day, be sure to spam that brand new emote, GDQ Wings. Uh, think about this as chat participation for what was the coolest moment out of what we've selected. Yes. And speaking of cool moments, I believe we have a Valley moment we want to talk about. Yes, this yes. game was a surprise for me. I hadn't even really heard of it. Uh, it just kind of <laughs> snuck in there in the middle of that first person like puzzle block. But everyone in chat was crazy about this game. And you can kind of see why from this clip. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Half-Life 2 run where they're using a lot of tricks to get momentum, kind of moving the camera from side to side. And this part is actually a really difficult jump that he's doing right here to get up the back of the elevator. But that's pretty much 
was the entire run. I think he spent more time in the air and out of bounds than he did actually ever touching the ground, which I think this clip definitely qualifies as uh, my highest flying clip of today. He's quite literally yeah, high flying exactly. too. That's the best part about it. You know what this kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of like the mountain physics in Skyrim. Yeah. yeah. Except he's not on a Where, horse. Like they, they just they don't care. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't need a horse. That's that's how you know that Valley's a, like a really dope game. You can skip the horse and just go exactly. straight into the nonsense <laughs> flying get around. The horse. This all you need is a, a mouse and you're on your way. <laughs> <laughs> And we also had Super Liminal, which Kung Fu, you were super excited to I talk was, about. I was, I was. I was really looking forward to talking to CRISPR, but just getting to catch the run was still really, really awesome. And I thought this moment was especially cool because not only does it show um, the really strange uh, idea and like the the percept, like the perspective of the game and how he's using that to his advantage. Not only is it what you're supposed to do in the game, but the way that he takes advantage of it to just suddenly fly out of bounds. He flies like so high and then he just like lands at the end of the zone. I think it's just like you saw this happen multiple times throughout the run with multiple different types of objects because you have this like one type of mechanic that just allows you to just just fly away and like and just you just mega clip it's amazing so it was really cool <laughs> to see like that being like an empty used soda is that a soda there. can you know get to the end i feel like he's using like a soda can or an empty gas canister yeah, or something using, like that yeah he went to like a drink machine and got a can out and he used like dice and he would use apples and all kinds of things <laughs> Now don't forget, everyone in chat, if you think that this is the high-flying moment of the day, be sure to spam GDQ Wings. Mine, my moment I want to talk about isn't quite necessarily high-flying, but there's a lot of dashing and aerial stuff. <laughs> and this moment really stuck out to me because Hollow Knight was a game that Hobbs and I did on our GDQ Hotfix show, The First Step, and we were awful. We, like, I, <laughs> awful isn't even the right word. I can't, I can't in good faith and in PG terms tell you how bad Hobbs and I were at this game. But just watching these two, two of the best Hollow Knight speedrunners in the world, just blitzing through these lasers. The only time they take damage is on purpose. And from what I heard from commentary, dashing under the platform like they did at the end of that sequence is actually just straight up a swag strat. Yeah. So in a race that was within 10 seconds of each other up until one of the final bosses, they had the gall to go and become the people's champion and try to dash in a swag way and they nail yeah. it. So for me, that's definitely a high flying moment. But we do have a couple of honorable mentions that uh, we want to bring up that we don't necessarily have clips about, which I'm actually gonna go ahead and stop the clips now. <laughs> But, so uh, fun to watch, though. I think Kung Fu, you had a couple. Uh, yeah, I mean, Dusk. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, <laughs> Witcher 3 uh, was an honorable mention for me. I mean, when they had the, the flying horse glitch, I was like, okay, this is how they're going to get around the rest of the run. And then, like, that never came up again the whole rest of the time because they went right into having Geralt, like, basically fast walk the rest of the speed run <laughs> and if there was anything faster than Geralt in that it was uh how quickly the runner commentated that game I was so impressed at how how he just like kept up this really snappy pace of commentary the whole time mm -hmm. didn't have any help and it was just made the whole run a blast to watch yeah I think it's also important to mention that um I mean Ori 2 just finished so you know it was very recent you know is scrambling to get together info for that but i mean it was a really wonderful run to watch and it's a really beautiful game and just I don't know, seeing speed tech for that just anything about the game or the speed run overall is just a, a wonderful time to sit and enjoy um there was a lot of really cool stuff that was happening in there that, i mean you could kind of see some reflections from the hollow knight run in a way just with you know the way that they build the ori like movements around and you know what, you three? There's way more of the marathon left. Mm -hmm. We're sure to see a lot more of these hype, high-flying moments. Don't forget, I'm giving you permission to give the mods a terrible time. Go ahead and absolutely spam those GDQ wings. And it looks like we're going to have Gunvolt Chronicles by Benja coming up immediately after this recap. But I hope all of you enjoyed it. I hope my brand new panelists with me had some fun with me too. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of us throughout the week, I promise. But Whether thanks you... a lot for your time, guys. And <laughs> we'll see you guys in the future. <laughs>
All right. Thank you, Keys and Kung Fu and Fees and YKB. All the people who I did not introduce, this is fine. This is a lot easier when you can see people. And this is Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online, powered by Twitch. Let's go ahead with a few more donations. Onkwave sends in $5. I think we could all use a little L-Link font after that Ori ending tonight. Yep, I agree with that. Christine Michelle sends us $25, a wonderful form of entertainment for a wonderful cause. As a third shift worker, it's lovely to have the entire night to watch some dope speedrunners make a joke out of some of my favorite games. And it's even better knowing that it's all to help people that so dearly need it right now. Sending lots of love to, I've, to all the guys, gals, and non-binary pals out there. Stay safe out, everyone. Oh, yes, Reaper sends in $5. My son was born during SGDQ last year, and I'm so excited to get to watch it with him this year. Donating for the UFO ending in Silent Hill Homecoming. Love, Oh, yes, Reapers and Little Reaper. Aw. That is amazingly cute. For Silent Hill. Michael sends in $25. One last donation for the night. Let's keep this going strong. Got some more poetry here. Twill Blackleaf sends in $15. Are we still doing haiku? I have a hollow night haiku. A gentle spring rain, dangerously nourishing, orange fungus grows. I like that. That's like atmospheric. No comment here, but we've got a $200 donation from Dr. Phineas. Thank you so much.
Cam91 sends in $25. Been watching for about seven years now. The vibe is a little different, but the spirit is still there. Looking forward to the next week's of, week of runs and the next few weeks for VODs. Good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good be better and your better best. Well, you're right, Cam. The spirit is still there. And I want to shout out all of you watching, all of you in chat. Y'all are bringing the spirit. This would not be a GDQ without you, and we are so glad you are here, and we could not do this without your support. A little bit of a, a throwback on this donation. No. <clears throat> Make sure I get this right. We have $25 from B Sneeze. Honk. Winnis sends us $25. Let's make a difficult game even harder. Lion King any percent, here we come. Uh, let's see. How are we doing on that one? We are doing really good. Just about uh, $25.55 out of $3,000 to meet that incentive. So definitely getting close. Remember that you can take a look at all of the upcoming incentives on the website, gamesdonequick.com. If you see, me, see something that you want to make happen, go ahead, send us a donation. Holy moly, no comment here. But Chris V's just sent us $500. Wow, thank you so much for that. That's amazing. Oh, man. Y'all are killing me. All right. I've got $25 here from Dom Fridge. The GDQ haiku. Hype org honk donate. This never happened before. Hi from Germany. That was, that was really good. That was really good.
And my friend here may not be on a mic anymore, but that won't stop people from sending love. I've got $100 here from Brutal's mom. Give to Games Done Quick. Help Doctors Without Borders. It's for a good cause. I've also got a $10 donation here from Zach K. Been looking forward to Gun Vault all day. One of my faves from last year. Here's to an awesome run. And I'm getting word that I have it correct this time. We are going to go to the runner. So let's go ahead and do that. Benja, take it away, my friend. 